Who belongs in the future? That's a question that writer and director Joe Cornish asks in his brisk, low-budget alien invasion movie, Attack the Block. This movie stars Jodie Whittaker and John Boyega before they became the 13th Doctor Who and Finn in Star Wars, respectively. Who belongs in the future? That's also a question that's pushed artists toward movements like Afrofuturism and Indigenous Futurism. It's not enough to imagine futures, but many want to reconsider who we imagine living in the future. A writer like Rebecca Roanhorse wrote Trail of Lightning to push back the idea that indigenous people belong only in the past. They belong in the present and the future. Cornish, an English screenwriter with credits for movies like Ant-Man and The Adventures of Tintin, explores a similar wavelength of ideas by placing a multicultural London at the forefront of an alien invasion. Cornish found his inspiration for Attack the Block in the unlikeliest of places, being mugged by London teens. Rather than seek revenge or write a story of retribution, Cornish sought to understand where these teens came from and how they're excluded from society. Written as movies like Harry Brown, starring Michael Caine, showed seedy, inhuman views of these teens, Cornish said in an interview, I think that's the easy option, to take something in the world that already is demonized and just make it even more scary and horrible. Attack the Block conceives a story in which trainee nurse Samantha played by Whitaker, is robbed by multicultural teens led by Boega's character Moses. As the robbery takes place, a meteorite falls in London. Based in their block in a council estate, Moses and his gang end up as allies with Samantha to defend the block from aliens. While the action and low-budget creature effects take our attention, so does Moses' musing of a future after he receives a new criminal opportunity. These are characters facing a disruption beyond alien invasions. Samantha feels out of place around Moses' gang, but she learns to accept them as individuals worthy of a future alongside her. That's the essential question for this movie. Do people who make mistakes and live a hard life deserve a future, a second chance? Cornish himself said, I don't think it's an incredibly radical premise to try and have sympathy for someone who's made a mistake. In casting and writing dialogue, Cornish engaged with council estates, especially the drama classes of these estates, to understand these teens, and especially how they speak with a dialect called multicultural London English. I'm not here to be scared of us tonight. Trust them. I bruv, I saw her ID card thingy. She's a nurse, isn't it? Some context. After World War II, and as the British Commonwealth began decolonization, the UK allowed its subjects to migrate and work in needed sectors through the British Nationality Act of 1948. Many of these immigrants settled in London, Birmingham, and industrial towns like Luton. The immigration sparked a backlash, most famously by Minister Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech. In 15 or 20 years' time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man. This context of xenophobia informs Cornish's movie. These gangs fit what Enoch Powell imagined in the 1960s. Yet Cornish and Attack the Block pushes against this exclusion and inhuman view of, for a compassionate view, at people who, no matter their circumstance, deserve a future.